I'm super excited to hear from Colin tonight. He's always up here playing guitar. And a uh, fun fact for you guys, Colin and I actually started taking guitar lessons at the same time. It just worked out for one of us. And he's been able to use that, that gift to just lead us in worship for so many years. And one thing about Colin that there's just no doubt that he loves Jesus and he wants to see people draw closer to Jesus. So I'm excited to listen to you, man. So you guys get ready and uh, here we go. Cool. Well, uh, I'm Colin, like you said. Um, and just in case any of you don't know anything about me, uh, I'm on staff here at Crossroads um, and I am our music director and tech director. Um, and I kind of just oversee those um, teams. I assist Clayton uh, as the worship leader's assistant. Um, and this is my first time ever preaching. Um, and it's, I was, yeah, I've thought several, huh? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought several times about what I wanted my first message to be on. Because I almost preached a couple years ago. And don't mind me, I'm just muting some stuff. Um, there we go. Um, and then, um, so I've thought several times about what I wanted to be. Um, and, you know, the obvious choice probably would have been to do worship or something like that. Um, but I didn't want to just do that. I do want to preach a message one day on worship. Um, but I feel like, um, you know, that's not what I do exactly. It's ministry as a whole that I do and serving God. Uh, and I really think it worked out good uh, with Keith's message being on missions and you know, how to help out the global church. This is focusing more on the local church and how to um, spread God's um, love and the gospel through the community. Um, and most importantly, how to serve in different positions where you've been gifted and talented at. Um, so I just want to start out by asking a couple questions, and you can just raise your hand. Um, so first off, how many of you have served um, in ministry or like a kingdom-focused non-for-profit? Just go ahead and raise your hand. It can be anything to any capacity. Cool. So most of you have. Um, so how many of you have a desire um, to go deeper and help more, or maybe some of you just want to get started? Yeah. I would hope everybody wants to go deeper. Um, and then last question, um, how, how many of you have gotten paid to do ministry? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like you're on staff, but you've gotten paid like at least once to do something. Um, uh, I served for, gosh, about, well, this is my fifth, this month is my fifth year on the worship team um, on Sunday mornings. Um, but I've been serving in worship for about seven years, um, and I've, or maybe longer than that, I don't know, uh, probably eight. Um, but I've been doing the position I do now uh, for technically two years, um, about two years, two and a half years. Um, I didn't start getting paid until uh, last year when I got around on staff. Um, I've been on staff for uh, about 10 months, I think it is. Um, and you know what? The paycheck really doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I can do this comfortably um, and give up more time to be able to serve, because I'd still be doing it if I wasn't paid. Um, and it gets discouraging sometimes when you um, are working really hard. Um, and you know, Clayton and I have had talks about like who who the pay in ministry and stuff, and it's it's complicated. Uh, but it's truly a heart thing. I would still be doing it if. Um, there was no money involved, and really, um, that's, that's because it's my desire and um, my passion. Um, I love reaching people through worship and worship arts um, stuff. Um, I love doing lighting. Uh, Dylan does a great job running lights. Where is Dylan? It's up there. Uh, Dylan does a great job running lights. Uh, I've tried to program them as best as I can for him. Um, I love doing that. That's probably my favorite part of my job. I love uh, doing sound design stuff. I love playing electric, of course, and doing the talk back. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, I just love any chance I get to serve, really. Um, I've served a lot in teens, too. I used to lead the teen worship team. Um, and, you know, those, those were great. 
Those are great come to Jesus moments because I learned that I was not good enough on my own at that point. I knew that my skills were not, um, uh, they did not matter because they weren't good enough. Um, Because working with um, learning middle schoolers, like learning musicians who are middle schoolers at the same time is not a good combination. Um, I found that out the hard way. And I'm not a very patient person um, necessarily, but that gave me a lot of patience, um, which has helped. Um, but basically, uh, real quickly, a little bit more about myself. Uh, I've been attending Crossroads for 11 years now. Um, I've only been a member for the past year um, because <laughs> I, I mean, my parents have been members for 10 years. I just assumed that counted. Um, but I was told very quickly that it wasn't once I was on staff. Uh, but that's besides the point. Um, so why, do, why did I choose to do ministry? Uh, so a little bit more about me. I went to tech school um, to be an audio engineer, and I took the music production program at DSC. I actually worked for the program as a tech assistant. Um, and, you know, it's great. It's a lot of fun. Um, and with a degree like that, you know, I could go get a job somewhere that would pay me pretty well um, to do audio setup all the time. Um, and obviously, ministry is not the highest paying thing in the world. Um, it's, anybody going into that knows that kind of. But it's more, again, like a heart thing. Um, it's what I wanted to do. I could have gone off on tours and stuff and done lights and audio. I could have moved to Nashville and uh, recorded records and stuff. But I chose to um, stay here. And uh, I chose to do ministry about two years ago when I started helping Clayton. But it was like a real thing for me last summer after Fusion Night, where I was like, yeah, I really, ministry full time is like my goal. Like that's where I wanna get. Um, And you know, I think ministry full time has some uh, some weird, um, what's the word? Yes, thank you. Uh, It has some weird connotations of Um, like, you have to be full-time, you have to be, uh, 40 hours, uh, eight to the four every single day, or nine to five, whatever, um, and that's not the truth, really, ministry full-time is, like, you are dedicating yourself completely to follow Jesus, and, uh, to go out into the church and serve where you have been gifted, and to give all of yourself in that, um, and it's, it's been a, it's been a great, Um, road. I mean, I'm still on that road. Um, I'm, you know, again, I've only been on staff for a year, but I don't plan on stopping um, church work anytime soon. Um, And again, even if it wasn't paid, it would still be the same. Um, So, yeah, Uh, let's get into some scripture. Uh, Let's go to Mark 8, 34 and 36. Um, I have my iPad, but if you have your Bibles... It's cool, too. I thought about preaching from an actual Bible, but, um, yeah, my eyesight's not good enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really not. Um, so, yeah, we'll start on verse 34. And really, I this is probably my favorite passage ever. Um, it's up there. I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but this is probably the most challenging and convicting for me. Um, So it says, when he had called the people to him with his disciples, he said to them, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever would lose his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So I believe that these are probably some of the most challenging words um, spoken by Jesus, um, you know, essentially he's calling us out. If if we want what the world has to offer, and you know, no matter how much of that we gain, no matter how much followers we have on Instagram, or um, you know, how many how many people um, compliment us on how good our music might sound, or what whatever you're serving, and um, that doesn't matter. It's um, because it, it's of the world to go for your own glory and your own um, fame. 
But if you lose your soul, if you put yourself aside and let God be the true reason you are um, doing this, uh, that's, that's where your soul is found. Um, that's what God has called us to do. Um, and, you know, I, I just have, there's been times where I've been discouraged and, um, you know, seeking for approval is something that um, is a very common thing for people to do. Uh, I, I mean, it's in any aspect of life. You know, we all seek for approval. But in ministry, and it's not necessarily uh, wrong to, like, wish I got a thank you or something like that. That's always nice. And if you ever become a ministry leader, definitely tell your volunteers all the time, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you. Um, that goes a long way. And even though that's not what it's about, um, it really does make a difference. But besides that, um, you know, it's it really truly, uh, w- no matter what people think, it's about what you're doing for God. Um, and if you're making God proud, that's really all that matters. Uh, so, you know, if you're young and serving a lot and you feel discouraged sometimes, just know that, you know, God is proud of you. Um, and that if you're doing it with the right heart and for his glory, um, you know, you are doing it with the right intentions, uh, you're not seeking for that approval, then you are doing uh, what he says to do um, in this passage. Um, so one uh, thing I wanted to, uh, one statement I wanted to um, give, uh, let's, let's stop referring to it as my ministry and start referring it to as God's ministry. Um, that's a very common thing in this day is like to go like, oh, this is my ministry, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, which, yeah, it's your ministry if you're a leader. Um, it's true. But ultimately, the mindset should be this is God's ministry and I am being used to um, uh, push out this vision and this plan that is going to move our church forward and reach more people for the gospel. Um, you know, remembering why we do this constantly is a huge step, um, and it's a kind of like a reality check we need to have daily. Um, it's like, why are we doing this? Um, I, you know, I try to stay very humble and ask myself that a lot, and sometimes, um, Clayton knows I've had an arrogant issue in the past, arrogance issue, um, <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a challenge when, when you're a, when you're a 19 year old kid who's learning um, all this tech stuff, and you start knowing a lot, you kind of get a big head, and that was something I prayed about a lot recently, uh, like last year, uh, when I was going into ministry full time. I'm like, I need to get rid of this. Um, and, you know, I just prayed to have a humble heart. Um, and to keep reminding myself that, like, hey, this is not about you. Um, and it, like I said, it's just a reality check that we need to have sometimes. Um, and what you do to make yourself look good doesn't matter. Uh, if we're making God look good, then that's what truly matters. Um, it doesn't matter um, how good you might sound if you're a worship leader. Um, if you are leading with a pure heart, um, then that is what matters to God. If you are leading people into um, his throne room, then that is uh, what he's called you and put you into place to do. Um, and, you know, for me being a young worship leader, that was something I have to remember a lot. I don't really like my voice, to be completely honest, but I love leading the congregation of worship because it's such a special thing, and I know that God can still use me. And that's with every aspect of ministry, again, um, you know, he's enabled you with talent and spiritual gifts. Um, so if you're using that for his kingdom work, then that's really what matters. Um, so I wanted to touch it again on the next point. Um, excellence in ministry is a reflection of the kingdom. Um, so there's a, there's a kind of a culture that's been building up in the church, church sorry, um, of perfection. And perfection isn't really a thing of... Um, God. It's a thing of man um, because perfection implies no imperfections. It um, implies no mistakes. Um, And as people and your volunteers are going to mess up, um, 
you know, again, if you're a ministry leader, your volunteers uh, that serve under you are going to mess up. Um, and really, if you if you are going for perfection, then you know you're probably telling them like every little thing they did wrong, and that's not you know that's not of God. Um, I I was listening to a podcast. Who likes podcasts? Yeah, I kind of got into them recently. Um, I got AirPods, so I started listening to them while I'm at work. But anyways, I was listening to a podcast, um, and it said that um, uh, perfection is, I forget the quote, actually. Hold on. (laughs) It was something along the lines of perfection is the world, um, but excellence is of the kingdom. I think that was it, yeah. Religion. Ah, yes. Thank you, Clay. Perfection is religion. Excellence is kingdom work. Um, And you know, you've heard it said here before. What we what what we believe in isn't necessarily a religion. It's um, about a relationship with God. Um, It's very personal, um, very one on one. Um, It's not about routines that you do. It's about the life that you live. So that kind of reflects that in the way we serve. Um, We don't need to be perfect because we're not perfect people. Um, We've been, uh, you know, ministry leaders, we've been blessed with the chance to work with these people. Um, So make them feel um, at ease, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, and let them know that, yeah, excellence is what we're shooting for. Mistakes are going to happen, but don't get after them after every little mistake. It's hard. Um, because you think that's excellence, but that's not really. That's perfection, and like I said, it mirrors religion. Um, and striving to do good is not a bad thing if it's done with the right intentions. Um, you want to do the best you can, but it's the heart that really matters. And if your heart's not in the right place, if you're striving to do good, again, for your own accomplishments, then it really doesn't matter. But uh, I want to go to another passage. Um, so if you'll turn to Colossians, it's also on the screen. Um, but I have to turn there too. So, uh, Colossians three twenty three and twenty four. So it says here, um, and whatever you do, do it heartily, as for the Lord, and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Um, so you don't necessarily. Um, I'm sorry, I'm skipping all over my notes. <laughs> We should want to, um, uh, what we do in church should be because we want to um, constantly push out the gospel. Uh, Like it says here, whatever you do, do it hardly as for the Lord, not for men. Um, So, you know, sometimes in ministry, you have a set goal um, and you have a set task. Like my goal is to make our worship team and our tech the best it can be. Um, but sometimes um, the children's ministry asks me to do something for them. Uh, doing that for them and with the right heart is pleasing God um, because you're kind of leaving behind your own agenda. And that's kind of where that full time ministry kind of comes into play is like, it's not just about like one specific thing, it's about the church as a whole and seeing the body of Christ advance as a whole. Um, so our um, self selfish selflessness, sorry, Um, I'm not the best at public speaking, Um, selflessness, um, that's where that should kind of come into play, like, we shouldn't be selfish um, in our schedule, and, like, think of it as inconvenient to um, do something for other people, because, again, it's for God, um, and we should do it with a excited um, and pure heart, Um, if, if we want Jesus to be seen um, through us, we must remove ourselves. Um, that way, Jesus is all that's left. Um, if we are serving with a worldly heart, that's going to reflect, and your ministry is going to look worldly. Um, but if you, like I said, if you remove yourself till all that's left is Jesus, um, then that is going to allow you to serve um, with the purest intentions, um, and it's just going to make a world of difference. I mean... If you, I keep going to the worship team. Let's let's. What's a different ministry? What's a ministry that somebody likes in here? Raise your hand. Youth. Youth is a great one. Uh, Clayton, youth pastor. Um, 
you know, I, I love youth. Uh, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Youth is great. They're the next generation. They're very important. If you're not involved or you haven't ever tried youth, give it a shot. Um, but if, uh, it, you know, with youth, um, I'm trying to think of how to say this exactly. <laughs> but, um, you know, with, with the youth, if you, um, if you have people, if you have leaders who are living a worldly life outside of teens, like we have small groups, right? We have small groups on Sunday night. Um, and, you know, First Baptist, the church we work with a lot, has small groups on Thursday night. Um, and they have leaders, um, and they also have small groups on Sunday morning. Um, but that's besides the point. Um, there's leaders for the group. Um, and they pour into these teens, and, you know, teens are a challenge. They have a lot of struggles and a lot of questions. They're going through the hardest years of their lives. Um, I think that's the hardest years of your life, uh, because it's where really all of your faith and everything you've known as a kid kind of gets tested, um, and there's a lot of people who have issues, and they want to talk to you um, as a small group leader, and, you know, I just, I think it's such a shame when uh, people lead and they help these kids with problems, but then they go out and they start doing the same things that they're struggling with. Um, you know, partying, partying and drinking is like uh, a big thing in high school. Like, I never got involved with it, thankfully. Um, I didn't really have much friends in high school. Um, but, so I, that wasn't really an option anyways. <laughs> But, so, um, but yeah, so people like to go out and party, like, whatever. Um, teenagers come to you, and you tell them, oh, yeah, it's not right. You show them scripture, whatever. Um, and then they see you doing the same thing that they're doing. They're like, well, well, this looks kind of weird. They're doing what I said not to do, or what they told me not to do. Um, so if you have a whole group, if you have your youth group who the leaders live worldly, if Clayton was living worldly as a youth pastor, that would be reflected in, um, the ministry as a whole. And, you know, God wouldn't be reaching those teens, um, the way they should, um, and, you know, that's kind of where I was going with that. Uh, you know, you have to remove your worldly intentions. Uh, Jesus has to be the center, or else it's not going to be used in the correct way. Um, but I want to move on to, yeah, next point. Um, have a set goal and vision when you serve. This is so important. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times I have came in here intending to do work and then never clocking in because I'm like, I just want a snack. I just want to go eat. <laughs> uh, Anthony remembers a couple weeks ago. I didn't really have any, I didn't have anything major to do here. I was just coming in here to just knock out a few things so I wouldn't be stressed or have to come in on Saturday. I walk in and there's like chicken wings in the fridge. So him and I got a plate of those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then, and then we'll go on like 30 minutes after we eat that. I start to walk around, act like I'm going to do something, and then find hamburgers from Fusion Night. Um, and then I walk over to my office, and I remember I have a bag of Sun Chips. Still not clocked in at this point. This is like two hours into my shift. Um, and I ate like the rest of the Sun Chips. Anthony had like two. Um, there was a ha whole half bag. Three? Three. Okay. Um, and then finally I'm going over to the gym. I'm going over to my, my card that I'm going to punch in. There's a box of pop tarts. <laughs> you would have thought I haven't eaten in like two weeks, but I grabbed the pop tarts and I never clocked in. I walked right past the thing. Um, and I go into the gym, I walk in and there's a couch in the gym that we discovered the, um, the day before, and I was like, I'm going to take a nap on this couch. And then, like, 30 minutes goes by, and it's like, oh, wow, it's time to go already. Um, but I say all that to say, having a set goal and a set vision 
um, long term and daily is very important to be uh, productive for God's purpose. Um, you know, it's so silly and wasteful if God's blessed you with a position to serve. Um, whether it's on staff or not on staff, if you've been blessed with a leadership type position or just any position in general, um, it, it's wasteful to just not have an idea of what you need to accomplish and then that leading to um, uh, just no productivity. Um, and, you know, it's, we kind of talked about this in staff meeting this morning, actually, with idling and it being a bad thing. Um, and, you know, there's a difference between rest, which is very important. Um, you need to rest. You can't burn yourself out. Um, I've been there, done that, um, and learned the hard way. But there's a difference between rest and laziness. Um, and really, you don't want to serve with a lazy heart because that will reflect again in your ministry. You'll have a lazy ministry. If you have a vision and your ministry sees that vision, um, they're going to be so inspired to do this work for God. They're going to want to accomplish this vision that you have. Um, and, you know, that's the, that's the best way you can lead is just having that set goal. And, again, it's a daily thing, too. Uh, when you go in, know what you want to accomplish. Pray about what you're going to do that day. Um, and, like, for instance, with Clayton and I on Thursdays, that's our music practice day. Um, so, you know, praying for music practice to go well. I have, like, I have like a, an hour um, carved out ahead of when I leave um, to, you know, kind of clear my mind, look at the songs, look at the meaning, uh, pray about practice, um, and, you know, what we're going to be doing, um, and just praying for the right heart. Um, and, you know, having, having time carved out to pray or read your Bible um, for that purpose of ministry is just like the same thing as having a time to pray and read your Bible in your walk throughout the day. Um, it's very important. Um, and, um, you know, if you don't have a vision, if your ministry is just kind of living day to day, then you're not going to get anything accomplished. Um, and really that's what's going to um, make people kind of fall out of your ministries. They're not going to see, like, they're like, we're doing all this work, but where is it leading to? Uh, it feels like we're in the same spot that we've been in. Um, but then I want to go to one more. I think this is the last passage. I believe it is. Um, 2 Corinthians, Corinthians well, uh, 12, 9 through 10. Um, I just added this one today because uh, I thought it was very, very good. Um, so 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. It should be up on the screen. It is. Um, it says here, but he had said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will boast in my weakness that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So I take pleasure in weakness and reproaches, in hardships, in persecutions, and in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You don't necessarily have to be ready to do this whole ministry thing. Um, God can take you as you are in your weakest state. Um, you know, I think back to small group leaders. Um, you might think, um, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm not a, I, you might be a newer Christian who just put their faith in Christ. Um, and But you want to serve, and they need small group leaders, and you kind of feel like called to do it, but you're like, I don't know. I I don't feel ready. I don't feel like I'm at the place spiritually I need to be. That doesn't matter. Um, you'll figure it out. You'll figure out what works and what doesn't as you go. That's a huge part of ministry. It's just figuring out as you go. Um, but if you rely on God and do your best for Him, then He'll work out the fine details. And you know, it's super easy to stress out and get overwhelmed. Um, that's kind of where rest comes into play again. Like I mentioned. Um, but, you know, it's, it's easy to get overwhelmed, but, you know, just praying for peace um, is a big part of um, what we do in ministry. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just like in life. You can get overwhelmed with a bunch of tasks, but, you know, you have a God that's bigger than those things. And, you know, the reason you live your life is to glorify him. 
Um, so he'll help you through it because he wants to see you achieve that. Um, but that's pretty much the body of my message. Um, I wanted to finish it out, kind of mirroring. I got this idea from Keith when he was talking about the different areas to serve with missions. I wanted to kind of present the same thing because, again, I think the two kind of go well together. You got the, you got the whole global church and then the local church. Um, but, you know, it's just some areas to serve. Um, you know, some of the teaching and discipleship fostering um, areas are like youth group. We kind of touched on that. You know, it's, it is the next generation. It's very important to be involved in these teens' lives. Um, you know, talk to Clayton if you want to get involved with our youth group here. Um, and, you know, if you want a small group lead, if you want to help with games, um, if you want to um, be the welcome team or whatever, um, you know, there's tons of different areas and um, tons of different things for different skill sets. Um, children's, kind of the same thing. Um, they have um, small groups, some more like classes. Um, but, you know, there's so much to do with children's. Um, young adults, that's us. Can we hear it for the young adults? That's a lot of excitement. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so our young adults, obviously, right now we're meeting like this, but we do do small, do do, <laughs> LOL. Uh, I knew something like that was going to happen at some point. Um, but we do do small, oh, I did it again. We also do, we also too as well do small groups. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, so we do small groups. Uh, and, you know, you can, I think it's cool the way small groups are done here because when you're in youth, you have usually like an older leader. But in here, it's like everybody's kind of that same age group. So the discussions are really good sometimes. And sometimes it's easy to get distracted. Um, we have some fun conversations in the guys group, um, the good old days at Cameron's house and stuff. Um, but, you know, it's really cool to get involved with that. And again, you can talk to Adam um, about serving in there. Um, you know, for more long-term things, uh, counseling. Uh, we have counselors here at Crossroads who just, uh, it, you can be like marriage counseling um, or just really any kind of, like we have grief share, which is a form of counseling. Um, helping people um, who've gone through things. Uh, pastoring, that's obviously a big part of church is the pastors. Um, mission training and support. Um, so like Keith was talking about, you know, there's the mission side of thing. Um, but, you know, the church does a lot to prepare those missionaries and to train them and send them out. Um, with some general areas to serve, um, that would be easy for you to get involved right away. Uh, welcome team, uh, serving food for youth or whatever needs to um, have food at it. Uh, maintenance, um, I helped Adam with maintenance for like <laughs> a good two months maybe <laughs> on Fridays. Uh, yeah, I wasn't very good at it. Um, specialized talents, these are the fun ones, I think. Um, and these are kind of, <laughs> these are kind of where like, you know, God's given you a gift and you can really use it. Um, graphic design. Uh, worship, tech, um, AVL, if you want to get involved with that, come talk to me because we need people. Um, it is really cool. You're the coolest people. Not that that's what it's about. I'm kind of sounding like a hypocrite. But um, so tech team, um, that's fun. Web design, um, photography, video production, uh, stage setup. Um, Anthony helps me with that. Austin Pearson has helped me with that in the past. You don't need any musical talent to help move things around. Uh, sorry, Austin. If you've ever heard Austin, if, actually, if you've never heard Austin sing, it's a glorious thing. You should really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to, you'll have to, like, go on a car ride with him sometime. This is fun. Um, you know, decorating and stage design, we do, like, Christmas themes. Um, that's kind of where I'm at, too, um, is doing a lot of design stuff. Um, but, like, for Walk Through Bethlehem, things like that. Um, if you're talented with that, then that's huge. Uh, but that's kind of all of our positions. So I have a few um, discussion questions here. Um, and you, we'll kind of break up for, um, what is it, like, five, ten minutes? 
yeah, uh, and talk about these. Uh, first question is, what talents or passions do you have that you could use to serve the church? Um, second question is, what is something that holds you back from serving? Um, and it can be spiritual. Um, well, yeah, mainly spiritual. Um, but maybe it's just like a commitment thing. You just don't know how much you can commit. Um, to the church. Um, but then the third question is, do you str struggle with selfish intentions uh, when serving, or is it truly um, is it truly God that's your reason? Um, so that being the heart issue, do you have a heart issue? Do you think you have a heart issue? Sometimes you don't know until you have like um, a close friend kind of break that out of you. But yeah, uh, just take some time to discuss with your um, the people surrounding you. Um, these questions, um, and then we'll close out with some worship. But let's pray first. Dear God, uh, thank you so much for this time um, and for this night that we can come and uh, just worship you and lift you higher, God, and uh, for the ability to serve in church, God. It's just, I just pray that you would uh, raise good leaders here, God, um, that people would be desiring to do your work. Um, and God, I just pray for um, just everybody as we go out um, and we go into our different areas, God, I just pray that we wouldn't lose the, the big vision, God, that's um, your gospel being spread throughout the, the world, God, and um, just here in the local church, God, that's, um, God, just use us as, um, uh, as your hands and feet to accomplish your goal. Um, God, we can't do this without you. Um, God, I know that many times uh, we think we have the strength, God, but we really need to rely on you. So I pray tonight, God, that as we um, dive deeper into ministry, God, um, as we make some decisions, hopefully tonight, God, to go maybe full-time or just serve more, that it would be to glorify you. Um, God, we pray all these things in your name. Amen.